Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I bless God for this opportunity to bring God's truth to you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you today. Thank you for the opportunity to speak your truth to God's people. And I pray that understanding will fill their hearts right now. Holy Spirit, you will not hold back anything that is profitable to us. But just like Jesus said, and we believe him, that you will guide us into all truth. You're guiding us into every truth today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now we are in Psalm 14 and verse 1 and 2. See, I love that verse 2. So verse 1, just a fool have said in his heart that there is no God. Verse 2 explains it. The Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if any, if there are any who understand, who seek God. And I was telling you yesterday about marriage relationships. And then you get to that point where you're thinking, I'm the one doing everything. Satan is tempting you. You, you need to understand now. Because as I'm speaking right now, there are several of you listening to me and, and you're paying attention to hear what I've got to say. You, you're thinking, okay, listen, the word of God is coming to you. And just open your heart. And let me tell you the truth. If God wants to change any situation, the first thing he will change is you. You see, because you didn't just get into that situation suddenly. You think you got into it, so you did it. It was a long way coming. It was tampering with your heart. Satan was dealing with your heart. You didn't know it. So that's why I said the first thing that changes when God wants to change your life is your heart. That's the first place he will pay attention to. He will change your heart. And what does that mean? Change your heart, change your thinking. And how does he do? He will throw his word at you and then you will whoa! I've been wrong in this area. Praise God. Just like, just like you're, you're there. You've been there thinking, oh, 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 oh. I can't imagine. It's me. Every time it's me. Every time. And now what's going on? Now they are threatening to sack you at your job. They are threatening to withhold your money at your job. They are threatening. All sort of things are happening. Someone is rising up against. Someone is writing a petition against you. Someone is just, you know, there's just every day you're battling issues in the office. And then you come back home. I'm so exhausted, man. Your husband say, oh, how's today, man? Terrible, terrible. And you begin to say, ah, I see, ah, I wish, I wish, I wish things were better with you. I would have resigned from that job. Now you are shifting attention. You don't realize that your heart has been contaminated and Satan is now after your job. You don't realize that. You say, How do I get out of this, sir? Maybe, maybe, maybe you're the one I'm talking to. I mean, currently, you are in this situation. You are the provider in your family, and you've been complaining. You've been feeling that pressure, and then suddenly, your job or your business or whatever is being attacked right now. I'm talking to you. So what do I do? Go before the Lord in repentance. Go before the Lord and say, Father, I think I've been sinning against you. Say, how? Yeah, I've not been acknowledging you. As the, source of, as the source and provider in my family. I have taken your place of honor, thinking I'm the one. Lord, I just want to repent before you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lord. And I'm sorry for despising my husband or despising my wife. I'm sorry, Lord. I want to come back to the place where you are my Lord. You are my God. And you are the provider. Lord, truly, truly. Yes, I walk. But truly, Lord, we have never gotten into any situation that the money wasn't there to sort it out. That's you. And Lord, I reinstate you as Lord over my finances. And I'll begin to honor you with my finances. You know, that's what Proverbs say. Honor the Lord with your substance. And with the first fruit of all your increase, so shall your barns be filled with plenty. The key word there is honor. He didn't say give. He used the word honor. But you see, most times we change it to give. It's not giving. It is honor. You see, if you take away the honor from the giving, then you spoil everything. 
So it's not just about giving. I keep sounding this thing. When you give your tithe or when you pay your tithe, whatever word you use for it, when you give your tithe, it's not the giving. It's the honoring. That's why you must understand it. It must settle in your heart that it is not about, oh, 10%. Shelly says 10%. I've removed the 10%. It must be the first thing you do. And you don't just do it in terms of transaction like you're sharing money with somebody. You, you take it to heart. Say, Lord, thank you. You know, Lord, I will always honor you in my finances. I will always honor you. And my mark of honor is by giving you the tithe first. So, Lord, I'm so excited that the first money that's going to come out of this money I just received right now is your money. Praise God. So, Lord, I, I give it to you gladly. And Lord, I'm ready. My heart is ready. And I'm open to you for you to direct me on what to do with this tithe now. Wherever you want me to send it to, Lord, just give me. I'm your errand boy. I'm your errand girl right now. I'm holding your money ready for the go. Praise God. And then the Lord will minister to your heart. That's a relationship, brothers and sisters. He's excited. Now, what's it? He's looking around. He's looking. He's looking. You got some money. He throws some money at you. And he's looking at you. And he finished spending the money. He said, pay your tithe. Hey, it's true. That last money I said, I did not pay my tithe. Hey, let me go and pay my tithe before pastor will ask me. Ah, is that why you're doing it? No understanding. And that's the problem. Of people, people, people tithe. They don't see results. You don't tithe. You just give money to your church. You don't tithe. I'm telling you how to tithe. You take it out as a mark of honor. It gets into your heart. That's the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver whose heart is in his giving. You want to give money to someone? Ah, you know, you, you, you want to bless someone, for example. And you just put your hand in your pocket and whatever you bring and you give to that person. That's not, you see, you gave the person money, but you didn't honor the person. It's as simple as that. You want to honor the person? Oh, oh I, I feel like giving this person some money right now. But see, I've got to give it as a mark of honor. Even if the person is lower than you, you honor all men. That's what the Bible says. Honor all men. Not only those who are ahead of you. You honor all men. You think about it. Okay, you know what? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a thousand naira. I'm gonna, you say it in your heart. I'm going to give you a thousand naira. See, that should take you to where you're going to. And what do you do? You, you, you put your hand in your pocket, yes. You bring out the notes. You look for the clean one. You say, oh, take. God bless you. The person will feel honored. You know, someone rushed up to me one time. Oh, pastor, say, please, 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 can, I, I need to see. I need to see. Say, what is it? And person rushed up to me. And there's a holding money in his hand. I'm like, oh, pastor, this is for you. I said, no, you don't do that. I said, get an envelope. Put it inside. Pray over it before you do this act of giving. If not, you're just giving me money. And I can't tell you that I'm going to bless you like this because there is no honor involved here. See, that's the right thing to do. It must get, the Bible says, whose heart is in his giving. So see that whole process of you getting an envelope, selecting the clean notes out of, you know, when you're giving cash now, you're selecting the clean notes out of it. Why are you doing that? Because you honor this person. And then you honor the Lord upon which you're giving what you're giving. And sometimes you give offering in church and you just get the script. You know, funny, some people actually keep the bad notes for offering. It was better you didn't even give that offering at all. God is not asking you for money. He is not asking you for money. <laughs> Praise God. You want to give God money? You want to give your pastor money? Make sure you do it as a mark of honor. Ah, How did we get talking about it? We we're talking about marriage and talking about who's providing and who's not providing. You see, now, now, now that's the thing. As, as I'm sharing here, God is ministering to your heart. So anywhere he takes me to, I just follow him, you know, and we get there. And then when he says you're done here, I'm trying to find out, okay, where next? Or where did I stop? Where did I deviate from? Praise God. So, so I was telling you this. You honor the Lord first. 
And then he begins to guide you. So when those thoughts begin to come, you say, no. Now I'm not going to succumb to this thought because your heart is about to be polluted. I won't succumb to this thought. You, you, you bless the Lord, Father. You've been always supplying. And I like it. You see, because let me tell you this truth. I told you yesterday. It says, Jesus actually said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. It is more blessed to give. So if you're the one providing your family, never get tired of it. Praise God. You just know I'm doing the more blessed thing here. Praise God. Whether you're the wife or you're the husband, yeah, I'm just doing the more blessed thing. And sometimes you joke with your, you know, you know, you find your husband and say, oh, honey, I'm, I'm not just happy. You say, what, what, why? You're the one doing everything. You say, honey, relax. I'm doing the more blessed thing. Praise God. So what do you mean the more blessed thing? He said it. It is more blessed to give than to receive. So what? The more I keep giving, the more I keep getting. Praise God. And then husband, oh, no, 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 no. I've got to sit up. Ah, no, no, no. I've got because that's the truth. The one who gives the most get blessed the most. It's as simple as that. So, so are you saying I'm the wife? If I'm the one paying all the bills, you don't know paying all the bills. They are is giving. You're giving. You're giving. You don't realize it. So, so you don't pray over it. You think a uh, mm, 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 bill has come. Mm, 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 I have to give now. Mm, 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 mm. You don't know you're giving. Is that what you do with your offerings? And today is Sunday, so I have to give an offering on Sunday. Mm-hmm. I, all this thing, everything goes to jail. everything goes to jail. You have to give offering. Is that what you do with your offering? You need to repent if that's what you do with your offerings. But hey, it's the same thing with your finances. It's the same thing when you pay your bills. It's the same thing when you pay your children's school fees. It's the same thing when you pay your house rent. It's a mark of honor. You don't complain about it. Hey, my house rent is due. This is my landlord's self. In fact, that toilet is not even working. I called them to let them come and work. Now they are coming to ask me for house rent. You don't do that. If you continue behaving like that, you will get broke. You bless the Lord. Father, thank you. Oh, Lord, you know, it's amazing how you've made this money available even before time. So Lord, we are, you know, and, and some of you are in the habit of holding people's money. You see, you are supposed to pay, but you are supposed to pay salary, and then you're holding someone's money. And so I said, he didn't behave well. I will not pay him now. You think you think it's wise, but you're acting foolishly. You know where we started from? The fool have said in his heart, there is no God. God who brought that person into your life knows that at this certain time the person should receive this amount of money. Now God is looking out for you if you understand. That's what we read in verse 2. Psalm chapter 14. He's looking out to see if you understand. So the person doesn't behave well. "Hmm, you, You didn't behave well. So I'm going to withhold your salary for one week before I pay you. Come on now. He says, listen, there are certain things you should never do. Look for other ways to discipline the person. But to withhold what is meant for the person, never do that. You'll be sinning against God. Because, you see, if God have provided, I'm not talking about, now there are situations where you really want to pay, but there is no money to pay yet. So what do you do? You call that person up. You sit down with the person and say, look, um, we, we, we are expecting some money. It hasn't come. Just be patient a bit. But not the fact that you... And some people do that. With, there is no money. It's not even to admit that there is no money. They begin to look for reasons not to pay. You're not honoring the Lord like that. You see, you honor God in the way you deal with people. Now, it's the same thing in your marriage relationship. You honor God in the way you honor your husband or deal with your husband. You honor God in the way you deal with your spouse, your wife, your children. You honor God in their lives. You, 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 never, you never want the school to write to you and say, your children's school, or you never want the school to send your children home. You never want that to happen. You see, the thought of not wanting that to happen is honoring your children. Because it's your responsibility to pay their fees. So you go before the Lord like that, I'm telling you. You go before the Lord and say, Lord, it will never 
happen. The our children are going to the school. We're going to keep our commitment where that school is concerned. And we'll play a place of honor because, Lord, we honor. You see, it starts with God. When you honor God sincerely, you will begin to honor all men. That's why I always tell you this thing. So when it comes to finances and attitude, it begins with your tithe. Now, this is why people were attacking tithe without. I saw preachers attacking tithing. They, I look at them and I said to, to myself one day, I said, these people don't know where they are going. They don't know what they are doing. You see, because they, their thoughts is tithe is just the money. So, and why are they attacking? Is it because their church is just collecting your money? That's all they can see. And God looks at them and shakes his head. He said, look, this guy, I remember the day the Lord spoke to me about this. Yeah, I was, the same thing I was just thinking about. I said, Lord, how come these people don't understand? And then the Lord said to me, he said, son, listen. For me to come to Abraham personally, and teach him about tithing and commanded him to tithe. You think it is worthless? Melchizedek, we never heard about tithing until Melchizedek met Abraham. And you think Melchizedek just met Abraham and said, oh, look, I need to give you something. Let me give you something. No, Melchizedek actually told Abraham, hey, Abraham, that's why he came to meet him in the first place. You don't understand. You think he just brought bread and wine? My time is up. Praise God. I'll continue from here tomorrow. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.